Hello, hello, I'm drawing Spinel, apparently. Actually, it'd be more correct to say that I've already drawn Spinel, and people have already seen this picture, probably for like a good week, but I'm drawing it for you, specifically. I just redrew the whole thing, pixel perfect. Let's just pretend that's true. Alright. This is a new character, and like every artist knows, whenever a new character comes out, sometimes that character's like, oh, this is like someone that I designed. I drew this. I drew this. And everything just fits together absolutely perfectly. Uh, there's no... There's no conflict between you and uh, the creature that you are creating, the abomination of flesh. But that's not the case with Spinel, no. No, 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 no. Uh, this is very much so not me. So, uh, during this period, this is like the first time I had drawn her, so I'm just like, just whatever, just fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. And just like right here, just scribbling like... Just a mad cunt. Just DJing like a mad cunt. And hoping that something will work. <clears throat> and this is the nature of drawing. Fuck art. Fuck it. Just, why do we even have it? There's no point to it. We could easily just wake up, uh, rot in our uh, bodies that are slowly decaying into nothing, uh, breed like once or twice, and sleep and eat until we just stop doing that. And then that's life, yeah. Who needs art? Anyways, uh, so yeah, the Steven Universe movie came out. So this is where this character is actually from. I've seen some people be like, what the fuck, where, where's this character come from? There was a movie, the Steven Universe movie that came out that's effectively like, and I like, oh yeah, I forgot. Steven Universe episodes are like 15 minutes long, are they? I was about to say it's like three episodes or something, but... It is an hour and 22 minutes long. However many Steven Universe episodes that happens to be, I have no idea. But just make a loose approximation of your personal headcanon, and there you go. But she's from that. Uh, if you do not want me to spoil the movie in any respect, just uh, flee. Just run. Run away. Run away from this video. Because I'll have to at some point. And I'm not the kind of person that's going to be like... Check the spoiler thing tag right here. Here's the number. No, I'm just I'm just gonna start talking. Then if it happens, it happens. Just like all my relationships, I'll just keep talking until something goes terribly wrong. Until something goes terribly wrong. Okay. So Spinel herself. Um. Well, I, I guess that would make more sense to just talk about the movie. Um. There's a there's lots of things people have been complaining about in regards to the movie. It it is a very good movie. Like I like it way more than probably ninety nine percent of the series itself. Uh, even though it was advertised as it's it's going to be a musical, my first reaction was Ugh, fucking musical. Really, Jesus Christ! By the way, whenever I was drawing this, I was like, I could swear I know I've done this exact pose before, and I've done it very recently, which always makes me extremely paranoid whenever I'm drawing anything. Because I'm like, am I just doing the same goddamn thing I always do? And the answer is yes, of course. Uh, but this time it was because I was uh, remembering that peg picture, I think it was, that I drew. And that was earlier this year? I can't really remember, but it's, it's sort of like this. Uh, except that one was way more, look at my butt. Here's my butt. I'm gonna tear my spine apart. Look at it. Look at it. Um... Yeah, I do not particularly care for musicals. Uh, usually, Steven Universe's songs grate on my nerves. Makes me want to, uh, I don't know, like, go out in the streets and strangle a cat or something. <laughs> no, not that. I love cats. Strangle child. Yeah, it makes me want to go strangle child. Who, you know, no one cares about children. Um, this is another one of those pictures, by the way, where I start drawing at 1920. Like, I'll upscale it uh, later after the draft. And then I'll downscale it for export. And then I just forget. So it's just a 1920 picture. So yeah, it's going to look like shit. Um, the the movie itself, I didn't mind the songs at all. Most of them actually were pretty good. The only ones I didn't really care too much for were the opening one about the, the creepy diamonds. Being like, Steven, let us just lavish you with attention. Maybe fuck you. Like, I don't know what in the world was going on there. But... That one and the one with Amethyst, where Steven's trying to uh, help her regain her memories. 
Uh, I forget what in the world that one is even about, but it's just kind of just them repeating the same phrase over and over again. I can't even really remember much about it. Uh, most of the other ones are pretty good. Uh, especially like the Other Friends song and the Floating Away song. Both of those are Spinel songs. And apparently the Spinel actress that they got to voice her... Here I'm going to struggle with uh, what pose this damned hand should actually have for like the next hour, so don't mind that. Apparently uh, she's like an... Uh, uh, she's specifically an expert singer at something. I don't know what she specializes in. But that has made people think maybe Spinell won't come back because of the difficulty in acquiring her actor again. I don't know what's going to happen with her. They haven't really mentioned anything about it. I hope that she manages to come out, uh, come back, because she's a pretty good character. Uh, in terms of the actual plot of the movie, not much really happens in the grand uh, scope of things. Spinell shows up. She's angry about something, and no one knows exactly what it is. And before Pearl can like recognize and give voice to, oh, this is so and so. She might be mad about this. Blah blah blah. Before all that can happen, uh, all of them, of course, lose their memories. If you've seen the thing, if you haven't, then you know, go fuck yourself. <laughs> but if you haven't, you just haven't. Um, so then, most of the movie is just them basically retreading the entire series up to that point. Which I think is sort of fitting given the nature of what the movie is supposed to be and how it's recovering everything that's happened up until then. I don't mind that too much. I know one of the general anxieties with Steven Universe is whenever you watch it, you're like, just go, just fucking have a plot, do something. And most of the time, the frustration comes in the form of uh, towny episodes. Because the creators spend a very inordinate amount of time. A series is a series or a movie or a setting is usually defined by something. And in the case of Steven Universe, it is the gems. It's There are magic space ladies that can do all sorts of weird, crazy-ass shit. There's a history behind it that you don't know, so the entire drive of the, the series is... Uh, who are these people? Uh, what is their backstory? How do they work? You know, stuff like that. But Steven Universe has the unfortunate tendency to linger on the Tony episodes, where they're just wandering around, just talking to random jackasses. And it ends up, as a result, becoming a, a completely different series that has nothing to do with its core premise. And that's probably the main reason why people get irritated with the Tony episodes. It's not necessarily because people hate the characters, although I don't really care or anything for most of them. It's more that the premise is not being fulfilled in those episodes. It has absolutely nothing to do with them most of the time. Uh, there's a big tonal and uh, like linear uh, storytelling disconnect between those episodes. And sometimes they're, some are better than others. The worst are whenever there's no mention at all of the gems. The best ones are whenever it actually incorporates both those things at the same time. So it uses the pretext of it being about one of the townspeople or whatever but it also incorporates something like Garnett's future vision or uh, uh, Pearl's ability to <laughs> make a spaceship or whatever and then it uh, uses that to uh, spotlight whatever's going on in the town uh, that way you're sort of covering a bunch of bases at the same time the worst ones are whenever it just doesn't bother at all and it's just Stephen wandering around talking to nobodies for no reason so uh, but Steven Universe, the reason why I think people are sensitive to that is just because they're so tired of that problem in Steven Universe, of the series dragging its feet for really no reason at all, and not fulfilling its core premise. Uh, that's where I think most of the frustration usually stems from. Uh, the fact that Spinella, like everyone has said, the fact that she's a throwback to old Rubber Holds animation, of course, is fantastic. I love that. Uh, she's... It's very fitting for the fact that it's a movie that could actually animate for once. So having a character like that definitely fits the bill in that regards. <clears throat> There's not many times where I'd say that she sort of stops animating. She's, she's always sort of out there. And even whenever she isn't, like whenever it's something a bit more static when she's uh, at the garden, for example. And she's mainly just doing, rec she's recounting information. And then she does sort of become a little bit more rigid. But that's more fitting for that tone of that scene. 
Uh, you're not supposed to be active in that case. Uh, her actual, like, personality... The, th the thing I actually find interesting about uh, Spinell is... Like I said, uh, they actually incorporate the premise of the show with the characterization. And in Spinell's case, it's... She is a gem. She's supposedly programmed or something, like whatever exactly goes on there, uh, to be like a friend. And you can tell throughout the entire thing she's struggling against her own nature, which is sort of a, a core theme of Steven Universe, along with the uh, whole politics, you know, LGBT, et cetera, and so forth. Um, so having her be this person that is. On one hand, she has suffered severe psychological trauma, but she's also a gem. Like, the whole way that gems work is kind of interesting, because they're supposed to be pretty static. They don't really change all that much. And that's one of the advantages that uh, Steven had at the start of the show, and they even mentioned this at, near the end, is that he has the ability to change himself, which is something that the gems all struggle with intensely. Like, they always have their natures... And the only way to sort of get them to heal themselves psych psychologically usually is to try to, I don't know, exploit that? Like, find their core nature and use that to sort of bring that out. Like, with Pearl, she was healed because uh, the source of her codependence uh, stopped existing entirely. So as a result, she couldn't do anything except for be herself. Uh, all the characters have something like that in one way or another. Uh, with Spinell, she is, by her nature, designed to be a friend. She's supposed to make other people happy. That's her imperative. And they do go, do a good job throughout the entire uh, movie of showing that in different ways. Of course, whenever she shows up, she's you know very happy to meet you, very active, jumping around. Almost like she's made to interact with a child, like a... Like, imagine that she's a best friend of, like, a six-year-old or something. And with uh, Pink Diamond, I really got the impression that that's what she was for, is... I, like, I don't... They haven't said anything about how diamonds are really made or anything like that, but... You get the impression that diamonds are a little bit more freeform in their personality, because that's, you know, they're the, the leaders, they're the most capable and whatnot. So they don't have defined purposes, necessarily, other than to be leaders. Uh, so the fact that they would have to develop more than an ordinary gem makes some degree of sense. So having a playmate for specifically diamonds to help them transition from knowing nothing about the world that they're meant to take care of into learning about everything and then growing beyond it makes sense. So Pink, and I'll say more about Pink later, uh, eventually outgrew Spinel uh, as a result of that, <coughs> which makes perfect sense. But Spinell, you can tell throughout the entire thing, she's adapting and uh, from uh, feedback from, like, Steven. Because she sort of imprints on Steven. I don't know why exactly she imprints on Steven exactly when Pearl imprinted on uh, Um Greg. <laughs> but throughout the entire thing, Spinell is trying to do things like... Uh, Steven's going through his problems. She tries to, at first, like, engage with him, then distract him. And it isn't until, like, he sees that, I think it's, uh, yeah, Bismuth and uh, Lapis are start workshopping ideas on how to fix the situation, and that's what actually sort of brings him out of his funk. And once that happens, then she sort of, it sort of clicks with her, and she's actually the one that give to give the idea of, hey, maybe we should try to fix them as puzzles. You know, she's the one that actually gives that idea in the first place. Give me a second. Don't mind that. My voice is just being destroyed. Ugh, the other day I was on uh, <clears throat> I was on stream playing uh, 14. And it's like I had to get something to drink. My throat is going dry. And someone stupidly asked, why would you need to drink something? You're just talking. Like, Do you really know nothing about talking? Like, you're a human being. I don't know. <clears throat> And that, develop, uh, that relationship between uh, Spinell sort of develops. You can tell that she's slowly changing and adapting to 
uh, her situation. <clears throat> and uh, as time goes on, she sort of uh, keeps trying to adapt herself to make Stephen happy, but she can't quite do it. And during the scene with them trying to fix Pearl by separating her from Greg to ensure that, you know, there's nothing for her to, to direct her codependency on, then this, the same thing sort of happens to Spinell. You know, uh, Stephen vanishes in the exact same way that uh, Greg does. And as a result, she has no way of sort of doing her, like, gym programming. It's no, It has nowhere to go. So as a result, she's just sort of left to focus inward on herself. And that's what helps bring out her memories as well. Especially with that independent together thing, which doesn't make a ton of sense since it's a bunch of fusions singing together. Like the ultimate form of codependency. But I guess in the minds of the writers, that is the ultimate form of being independent at the same time. And it's... I, I don't really know. <laughs> By the way, in regards to the drawing here, I'm just... I didn't know if I could actually pull off the... Uh, uh, cross hatching in this particular drawing or not. There are good and bad drawings. I'm not going to say this is an amazing drawing or anything. It's just a drawing that I did. I actually have had the render for this sitting around and I kind of didn't know if I wanted to bother with it or not as a, like a drawing. But I figured, well, whatever. I'm just being too self-critical. No one's going to care that much. They just want content to me rambling about something. So whatever, it's here. Uh, I have good and bad drawings in which I say, I can actually look back and say, this was a good drawing of, like, that I did. Like, it's not better than all these other people that I can think of. But in terms of the style that I'm going for, I actually succeeded. And there's not too many of those. But it feels like I'm always trying to get that. I'm trying to get that same result. That part where I'm like, every component of this picture is actually working the way that I intended it to. And this one doesn't turn out this way. But that's usually how I think in regards to my own drawings. Um, so yeah, uh, Spinell, she goes through that transition. Whenever she goes back, of course, uh, regains her memories and whatnot. I really enjoyed the um, the point of the song where it moves into turning pages for people to, who don't care, that sort of thing. Uh, in regards to, like me personally, here we go, color phase. Me, personally, things don't really... I uh, typically don't resonate too much with me, uh, especially in Steven Universe, because so many of them are about things that just... They don't really have any relevance to me, specifically. Uh, but I have, I've always been, like, very isolated. Like, even whenever I was a kid, I... Like, most of my personality came from the fact that I just lived out on a farm in the middle of nowhere, and uh, supposedly the only friends I actually had were, uh, like, in elementary school... And they all hung together all the time because they all lived in town, whereas I was just out of the middle of nowhere, and I was not allowed to go anywhere. <clears throat> and the few times I was, I always felt like I was a third wheel in that regard, and I just didn't really fit in with any of them. And, uh, like I've been over before, like I had a, a emotionally abusive sort of thing going on uh, during my childhood, in which... I sort of just kind of sank into that and I just stayed there for a long time. So, like, this is like nearly 40 years of development up to this point. But it's developed into this uh, personality I have now where it's more just uh, self isolation. Um, sometimes I have, th sometimes I think I have like a um, persecution complex of like being victimized for no reason, that sort of thing. Um, but the Spinell's whole thing of being abandoned and people not giving shit about her and just sort of existing on their own somewhere. Uh, oh, that's what I was talking about. But I sort of, uh, empathize with that in that relative way, because I actually noticed a study on this somewhat recently, uh, about a distinction, be like scientists have determined a distinction between, it's some, I don't know, some Reddit article. It was a scientific journal, but I saw it on Reddit. Uh... There's a distinction between depression and existential isolation, and I'm more like that. I have more of an existential isolation about things. I'm not really depressed at all, but I do feel as though like I'm very much so just me and no one else is exactly like that. 
So I often feel like I'm taking care of everyone else and all their problems. But in regards to mine, there's just no one that can really do anything. And most of the time, no one cares anyways. So that is, that's, that's sort of my adult life. Especially as a, a single uh, man and is uh, whatever I am, <laughs> late 30s, then I, I feel that a lot because, you know, that's just the nature of being a guy in the first place, especially one that's single into his 30s. Um, so it's, there's sort of a loose empathy f with me going on in regards to Spinel, which helps me appreciate her a little bit more. Um, re in regards to Pink, Pink has gotten to where she's sort of being turned into the scapegoat for a lot of the series' uh, problems. Because everyone else gets a redemption of some sort. Even, like, yellow and white, specifically blue, not as much. But especially white, who have subjugated the entire universe, apparently. Like, they, they act like it's the entire universe, which is fucking bizarre. It's not just the galaxy, it's the whole universe? Like, the scale of that is ridiculous. And they're running out of resources? Really? Anyways, that's another, that's another thing. But, like, they've done horrible, horrible things. And their entire, the entire culture that they've created is just this nightmare that everyone is living in, in which everyone is just a pre-programmed drone that exists to live and die for their one individual purpose that they're told from the moment that they're created, this is what you do, this is the only thing you ever will do. Uh, you exist to serve the hive. And the question of, well, why are we even existing at all? Like, sure, I'm mining rocks to give to so-and-so, and then they go do this, but why am I doing that? To support the Empire? What's the purpose of the Empire? And it's just it, to exist. Like, that's the... That's a problem I run into a lot with a lot of uh, people that are very much so... Um, like, you can probably think of your own examples, but there's people in life that want people to exist to be efficient, or we need more scientists, we need more workers. It's like, why? It's like, well, it'll make sure that the nation runs more efficiently, or whatever it happens to be. It's like, well, who cares? The whole point of society existing is to enable the individual to have a better life, right? That's the whole point of being alive. Like, you're alive... What, like, the, all the things that you choose to accomplish are just for your own personal satisfaction. You're not doing it for the glory of the nation. Fuck the nation. The nation's just an accumulation of individuals. It doesn't mean anything. Like, you get what I'm saying? So this, this entire, like, gem culture is all about that. It's destroying and crushing the individual for absolutely no reason and no purpose other than to keep the machinations of this great machine running even though the machine itself does not produce anything of value. It just exists to exist. But anyways, uh, the diamonds have been treated almost like toys, like they're just cute ants now. And it's kind of unsettling. It's not really a healthy way to look at them. That's because the, the writing is trying too much to humanize and, I guess, whitewash them in a way. And by the way, that is not just an exclusively racial thing. It's been around for a long, long time. <sighs> Lime washing things is what it actually is. But um, they try to whitewash all that all away to ensure that it's just something that you don't think about anymore. Just stop thinking about it. It doesn't matter. And by the way, yes, I know that her colors are not canon here. I decided I don't want to do the uh, overly emo one, and I didn't want to do the like basic one for obvious reasons because this is supposed to be suggestive. Plague of Gripes, it's on brand, on brand. Uh, so I decided, you know, what? I'll do like an in between, like it's uh, moving in between those two states, and that'll make it a little bit more unsettling because I find that funny. So that's the reason why I chose these uh, particular colors. Plus, I found that the white was uh, blending it too much with her skin tone, which could have been rectified in regards to uh, her um, secondary shading, but I uh, decided just not to bother. Uh, besides, I really like these colors. These are like my canon colors. It's, it's purples and magentas and uh, sort of these deep reds, things like that, and uh, some blues here and there. That's my range. Anyways. 
So yeah, they've been doing that with uh, the diamonds. So as a result, uh, Pink has been the one that's been getting it the worst because she's not there to defend herself in a way. Like, she's almost become the Steven Universe Hitler in the sense of everything is their fault. They're gone now, and they're obviously not great. So just anything that's wrong, just... They did it. Like, it was their fault. Like, they easily could have had... Now, it's more fitting for Spinel to have come from Pink Diamond, given the nature of how they told the story. Like, it parallels Steven, and it parallels Pearl, and all this other stuff. So it makes sense. Uh, but in the construction of most of their antagonistic forces, most of it comes down to Pink did something. And at this point, Pink is kind of just a monster. Like, more than anyone else in this series. Which is kind of funny, because Steven reforms all these gems almost instantly like she just talks to them or sings to them or whatever that's even a joke in the film even though spinel says you can't just fix everything by singing some stupid song i appreciated that but then it instantly works anyways but that's something else uh she mainly does it herself but yeah uh, pink has basically just been transformed into steven universe space hitler at this point where she she's just sort of loosely responsible for everything which is sort of fitting for her just because like, Steven would have the hardest time reforming her out of anyone else. Out of all the characters, I feel like he would have the most difficulty with her, just because she's one of these people that believes she's in the moral right already. So, like, those are some of the worst monsters that the world makes, is whenever people believe I'm right, like, I have the moral imperative and the, the um, uh, like, ethical right to say and do what I want to, because I'm correct. Which is a big problem these days, especially. And, um... Like, she would be hard to reform for that reason. She just could never see her own faults. Because in her eyes, her faults were really not that big a deal in the first place. And that's part of the reason why Steven existed at all, is because he just couldn't... Un she just could not understand humanity. And she still treated Greg like a toy. Like, after all that time. Uh, she was a user. She's just sort of a terrible person without being overtly a terrible person. Which are some of the worst people to be around because they're toxic to everything around them, but you just can't really recognize it because they're sort of still good people at the same time. It's really strange. Um, but the thing I liked about Spinell is that she eventually sort of fixed herself, which is sort of the, the point with uh, Steven's song, is that only you can do this. Uh, you have to be the one to do it yourself. Here we go, finished picture. <laughs> with my with benefits joke. The several people have already made. Uh, I made it independently, and other people have also made it independently, but you know. But I did appreciate that Spino eventually fixed her own problems. She realized, it like, I have all these horrible feelings, but at the same time, I still know that my nature is to try to be other people's friends and to be a friend to everyone around me. That's my nature. I can't fight it. That's who I am and who I choose to be. I don't know how I'm going to get through this other part of who I am now, but uh, it's not going to be through this violence that I've chosen to enact because this is not working and this is not what anyone else deserves either. Which is a struggle that actual people have to go through all the time, like trying to victimize other people for things that they never did. So, Steven Universe movie, pretty good movie, has a lot of good messages. Spindle's a uh, good old character and has a big old butt in this particular picture so <laughs> I hope you enjoy that big old butt I uh, hope you enjoy the Steven Universe movie if you saw it or if you have not seen it yet whatever but back to work for me I will see you guys next time